I am going to speak about uh, eco-socialist uh, implications of the rise of BRICS economies and BRICS economy in Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. And, and what I am going to say is that you know, these countries are rising in importance, China, India especially, but also Brazil and South Africa. And, and what are the ecological implications when these countries rise, economic, you know, economic growth takes place, which means more, more demand for resources, more use of resources, and more pollution. And, and so it is good that these countries are becoming more prosperous, but there are costs to pay. Um, you know, and, and from an eco-socialist point of view, what I want to argue is that the growth and development should be one which is compatible with ecology. Which are the main challenges for political economy in the coming years? Yeah. There, there are two kinds of main challenges, one in theory and one in policy. Uh, in theory, the uh, economic uh, uh, discipline is right now dominated by neoliberal economics, neo neo neoclassical economics, which mainly bases its analysis on market uh, functioning of the market economy. And we have to show that there are market failures, markets are not perfect, and therefore there are reasons for controlling the market, regulating the market. So that is at a theoretical level. At a policy level, it means that we have to think about policies which uh, on one hand uh, bring development, but at the same time they do not damage the environment because that's the biggest challenge we have, that our planet is at stake, that the, the way economic development is going on, it is leading to greater carbon dioxide emissions, which are leading to global warming, and global warming might cause a threat to the planet. So only that kind of economic development is, is good, which does not damage the environment, which does not sacrifice the future generations. And from an eco-socialist perspective, this means that capitalism cannot do that because capitalism is based on profit maximization. It does not bother about the environment. It does not bother about the future generations. So we have to develop, uh, this is a challenge, we have to develop an eco-socialist perspective uh, as an alternative to the modern capitalist uh, economy and, and, and politics. Okay, it, it, it occurred to me uh, another question is say about ecologism. And you, you can see in China, uh, there's no such uh, preoccupation about this the thing here in Brazil too, uh, it's always development. Uh, in your opinion, how uh, how can you manage this this team in China, for example, uh, for the, for in the future? Yeah, in China now they are realizing that uh, the kind of economic growth they had, it is proving very very difficult. Like there was a huge pollution in Beijing recently, so much pollution that the government had to tell people that stay within the homes. So when, when environmental pollution takes place, people's health deteriorates, they have to take leave, they do not work, that also affects development. So in China, there's a growing awareness that we should follow policies which do not damage the environment, which means different kind of transport policies, which means not ignoring, not, not developing car transport, but, but developing public transport, developing cycling, similarly energy efficiency policies that you know, those policies which, which uh, reduce the use of energy, similarly more re recycling policies and, and reuse waste disposal policies. So, and, and similarly housing have to be different, housing which consumes less energy. So, you know, this idea that ecology should be incorporated in all policies, whether they're housing policies, transport policies, or recycling policies, that is the kind of initiative. And in China, they are becoming aware. They are saying that we no longer need quantitative development. We need quality development. By quality development, they mean this, that, that you know, we should not completely destroy the environment. Otherwise, there will be nothing left, you know, with economic growth. I agree with you. Uh, but some people say that uh, ecologism is used by the, uh, the uh, first world uh, yeah. to restrain the economic development of, of the third world. What do you, uh, what do you say about that? <coughs> uh, I think there is some weight in that, that sometimes the, the advanced countries, uh, you know, they, they, they try to use uh, environmental standards to, to make uh, goods imported goods produced in the third world countries less competitive because then the cost will rise. But I think that is no reason for developing countries to totally abandon environmental initiatives. 
they should be aware of this uh, threat, but they should not come to this. Because if we come to that, that means that we will abandon environment. We will say that we want to have most efficient, uh, 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 cost efficient method, even if it damages the environment. That will be very, very dangerous. And secondly, now the per capita consumption of energy is becoming almost equal as in the advanced countries. So it will not be any more relevant. China has become the biggest emitter of carbon dioxide emissions now, more than America, you know. So the situation is changing very quickly and these countries will no longer be able to say, oh, we need to develop, therefore, you know, even if the environment is uh, destroyed, it does not matter. You can't say that anymore. So it is true that we should fight those people in the West, criticize them who want to use this environment as, 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 a, as, a, as a tool to reduce the competitiveness. But we should not fall uh, uh, victim to that argument f for abandoning environmental and ecological initiatives in the developing countries. What's your opinion about uh, um, the emergence of the Green Party, for example, in Germany, uh, trying to incorporate the ecologic uh, knowledge to the politics? Green pa the growth of Green Party is the most progressive thing which has you know, happened in, in the developing countries, in the developed countries, because they are offering a new, new vision, new mode of uh, development. And earlier the governments are you know, used to this idea that if they are able to have high economic growth, uh, you know, rise, rise in per capita income, more standard of living, people will vote for them. Green parties have the courage to tell people that we don't need more growth. We need good growth. You know, we need uh, ecologically uh, oriented jobs, even if it means less, less income, even if it means less consumption. And, and, and we, should be con we should think about the poor people in the developing countries who have so little consumption. We should not focus all the time on income growth. So Green Party is a new vision. And, and this vision is the, is the only hope to save this planet.